Now let's talk about the computer network. Now you realize that over the past years, millions, if not billions, of computers have connected to the, to, to together to form a computer network. So these networks facilitate communication of data between different computers and sharing resources. So basically, a network is a setup in which computers are connected together in such a way that they can share resources uh, such as data, uh, printers, uh, applications, and so on. So if you look at that diagram, it's showing that uh, there are eight computers they connected on a network. So you can see that there's a the server they controlling the network. A printer is also shared there, and they're also connected to the internet. All of them through their server. Now, what are the advantages of a network? Number one, a network has the advantage of sharing of data. So it means that when you have a network, you are able to to have a user share the data that they have on the, on the network, over the network. Then there is also sharing of peripheral devices such as printers. There is sharing of programs, and also there is a, a efficient communication when you have a computer network. At, at this point, you may need to to pause the video and uh, discuss in pairs any other advantages or benefits of having uh, computer networks. Now let's talk about client and server computers. Now a client is a computer that requests data from another computer which is known as the server. So the client does not only, only request the data but it also requests other services from the server. So there are quite a different number of uh, types of servers. Uh, for example, the file servers. I think in the previous lecture we talked about these types of servers. The file servers are responsible for storage of data. Then there are the print servers, we have web servers, we have mail servers, we have domain controllers. Uh, all those are different types of servers, including proxy servers. I think in the previous lecture we talked much about them. Now let's talk about the internet. Now the internet, the inter meaning the international net for networks. So it's an in, in international network of, of computers. We're, in, we're talking of billions of computers around the globe that are connected together. So the internet is sometimes referred generally as the net or the information superhighway, or some people want to call it the cyberspace. But it means the same. It's an international network of computers, and we have billions of computers connected together. So there are some terms that are used in association with the internet, like the W3, or the WWW, or some people just want to call it the web, which is a system of interconnected web or hyper documents. So the hyper documents are generally referred to as web pages. And these are pages which contain text, pictures, sounds, videos, etc. So we also talk of the voice over uh, protocol when we're when talking about internet as well. So in voice over uh, is also uh, referred to as a VoIP, which is an internet service that enables one to communicate using voice. Uh, with another person over the network. And we also have electronic mail services. I think you are quite familiar with the email uh, where we send electronic messages uh, over the network. And there are instant messages, which is uh, a, a chat service, which is available again on, on networks for people to, to communicate instantly. So there's also mention of the intranet. Now the intranet is an, an, an organization a private network that uses infrastructure of, of, of the internet and also it uses the internet standards and the World Wide Web standards. So when you have an intranet, you one has to have uh, the requisite credentials to access the organization's private network. So sometimes when you go to, to a website where you are required to, to access using the username and the password, so usually the intranet is a private organization's network but uses the, using the internet standards and the internet uh, infrastructure. The virtual private network. Now, the virtual, the term virtual, when something is virtual, it means it does not physically exist. So every time you have virtual, virtual, virtual reality, virtual computer, virtual network, it does not physically exist. So when you have a private network that uses the internet to connect to remote sites or user groups, we talk of the virtual private network. This technology is particularly useful when employees want to access their, their office data remotely from their homes and from any other locations they could be. So most organizations, they make use of VPNs to connect across multiple locations. The data transfer rate. The data transfer rate is a measure of how fast data can be transferred from one location to another. Now the data transfer rate is measured in, uh, in, in bits per second as a starting point. So remember when we talked about uh, the units of measure of data from the bit, byte, kilobyte, megabyte, 
uh, the gigabytes and terabytes. So the speed of the uh, internet in terms of how much data can be transferred from one location to another is measured in the same format. So we talk of bits per second, right? Then uh, when there are a thousand bits, we talk of the kilobits per second, then the megabits per second, and the gigabits per second. So we're talking of a billion uh, bits per, per, per second. So if you've got an internet speed of um, one gigabit per second, it means you're faster than someone who's got 100 megabits per second, as an example. In the, the, the figures they are showing the how many bits, how many bits is a byte, and how many how many bytes uh, make up a kilobyte, megabyte, and gigabyte. Now downloading and uploading. Now the act of downloading is the transfer of data from another server to your local computer. Then you say you are downloading information. So when you get information from another server to your own server, you are downloading. But when you get information or data from your computer, your local computer, to another server, that's the act of uploading. So when you measure your internet speed, you are worried about more the download speed because you want to look at how fast I can get information from other servers. Because when you go on the internet, you want to look for information. Rarely do we upload information. Well, in a in fewer cases, we want to upload. The, the, the key thing is downloading. How much can we download per given unit of time? Now, let's move on to internet connection services. Now, what do we need to connect to internet? And uh, what kind of internet is most preferable? So, we need broadband internet. Broadband internet en enables fast transfer of data uh, between computers connected to a network. Now, for us to be able to connect to broadband, there are many ways and many methods of connecting. The first, the most common one is the ADSL. The ADSL is the Asynchronous uh, Digital Subscriber Line. I think uh, uh, at home, it's one of the most common ones. The tail one, uh, where you use the phone lines, then you there's an ADSL modem connected there, then you're able to access either in form of Wi-Fi or you can put cables as well. So the ADSL is, very, is most common. So in most homes, uh, uh, people use ADSL, which is a facility given uh, through the, the, the tail one. But you can also use cable broadband, which uses TV cables to connect to the internet. And you can also use the Wi-Fi and WiMAX. So when you're using Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi usually is restricted to a maximum of 30 kilometers of radius. That's Wi-Fi. So when you go beyond 30 kilometers radius, that is a y WiMAX. But the technology is the same. You make use of, they make use of radio transmitters to receive and link uh, computers together. Then you also connect to internet through the mobile uh, operators. You know your Econet, your Net1, Telesel, they provide uh, internet as the mobile service providers. So you can access internet through them. I think from your smartphones you have always been able to, to, to browse internet using your ITIL, using your, your way and so on and so on and so forth. Then uh, we can also access internet through satellite broadband. In the early days of Zimbabwe internet, the, the whole country was connecting through the satellite in Mazoe. The, so the whole country was using uh, satellite internet. But today we talk of uh, fiber optic cable and various companies are providing fiber services. Liquid is good fiber. Tel one is good fiber. Powertel also has fiber. Cable and fiber provide some of the safest and uh, the fastest internet connectivity with respect to broadband. So at this point, you may also need to, to pause the video and talk about other options that we have with respect to internet connection. How can we connect to internet? And which connection uh, method do you think is better? You can discuss this in pairs and share ideas. Next, I want to talk about internet service providers. Now, internet service providers are companies that provide users with access to internet. They are generally referred to as ISPs. So in Zimbabwe, there are quite a number of uh, ISPs that you are aware of. Tel One is the most common. Uh, PowerTel also provides such services. We have uh, Liquid Telecoms providing such services. There are quite a number of other companies that provide internet services. I think you can also need to pause the video and discuss and share ideas of any other possible internet service providers that you are uh, aware of. But what is important is, what do you need to consider when choosing an internet service provider? Number one, you need to consider the speed. How much do they offer to you in terms of bandwidth? And is it really the bandwidth that they will give you? So some, some will tell you that our maximum bandwidth we can offer is uh, 
uh, 100 megabits per second. Some of the game off up to a gigabit per second. But we need to verify with what we call reviews. So you need to check with their customers. When they say they give you 500 megabits per second, is it really 500 megabits per second? So customers usually provide reviews. So a genuine ISP should give you the reviews from their customers so that you see the comments from their current customers, how they fare with respect to speed. Do they give you the exact speed which they mention on the, on the application forms? So that's number one. Number two, you look also at the quota. ISPs have got what is called the download limit or the quota limit, which, is, uh, which limits the volume of data in gigabytes that can be downloaded by users during a fixed period, usually at a month. So some will tell you that we can give you up a maximum of a gig, 10 gig per month, some talk of 20 gig per month, some talk of 50 gig. So it depends on the quota that the, the ISP provide. So depending on the internet usage of your organization, you may need to consider the quota, how, what is the limit so that you can opt for, for, for we can make a decision regarding the quota that you want and how much data you can download per given unit of time, usually, which is monthly. Then the third consideration is on the cost. How much do they charge because in terms of cost per megabit or for per gigabit? So different ISPs, they put different rates in terms of uh, uh, their charges for internet. So you generally one would want to look for, for cheaper internet, but also consideration should be made regarding availability of service. Because it can be cheaper but unavailable, then it won't help the organization. So you must consider these factors together with respect to availability of service, the quota, the connection speed, and the cost. Now when you access wireless internet or wireless networks, you must also look at uh, at the at, at the, uh, the, 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 the connection method. They are what are called open networks and they are also what are called secure networks. So if you look at that diagram there, you see the contour so there, there's an open network. But if you look at the wood groove there, the network is got a shield there, which is a, a secure network. So when you access such secure networks, you need to provide your um, a username and password usually to access that. So it is always recommended that we access secure network. Open networks are are, are vulnerable to that uh, there are a number of people who could be accessing it, and also when you join such a network, you, you could be risking yanking and, and other sorts of uh, vulnerabilities that come with the cyberspace. So it is advisable that we always work on secure networks. Right, so basically that is our introduction to networks. So let us let us uh, discuss uh, the various points that I've indicated in discussion, uh, discuss and share ideas and after viewing this, uh, this presentation, you may share ideas as a class uh, each pair may make their presentation at each of the points that have been indicated when we were supposed to discuss. Thank you.